as successful as I am, however successful that is, is because I'm a man. It's kind of a false equivalency, and I'm not trying to say that you don't know what you're talking about, but I'm here to challenge you right now. What you're saying is just, it's a false equivalency, because yes, there's only so much space at the top, y'all, right? There's only so, it, in spite of I know what they're teaching, those of you who are economics majors, they're teaching you the economy is not a zero-sum game. But fundamentally it is. Because there's only one earth, we're not getting off, we can't all be rich. Eventually some people, some people will always have more money than other people. So therefore, if they're competing and if they manage, let's go this way, right? If all of their people down here manage up here, that means what's going on now, right? That means this. He's coming down here. Because there are only so many resources to go around. You can only have so many Range Rovers. I know like your family has three. But... You know, you can't have, we can't, every family cannot have three. If all of their families had three Range Rovers also, and all of their families have three, I mean, at some point it stops. So tell me how we can make this thing fair. Uh, so you brought up uh, in the beginning of the class, I think affirmative action is yep. like a really great step towards that. I mean, you're creating opportunity for people uh, you know, with more diverse backgrounds, not just white people, so, yeah. Okay, so affirmative action is fair. So, someone tell me what affirmative action is. Um, yeah, so affirmative action is just like, it's a, it's a soluble solution to an insoluble problem, so. Wait, it's, it's a what? It's a soluble oh. solution to an insoluble problem. So okay. it's just like, it's a problem that can't really be solved. We can just try and take steps towards redefining it. Cause like, ultimately it's like, we're talking education here. So you'd have to scrap the whole education system that goes back to public schools, like public schools in poor like socioeconomic places, kids that aren't receiving that education, that funding, and then it's like, at the end of the day, you said there are X amount of resources to go around, so now we have to look at privatizing education. Um, even in his discussion, this is something that really upsets me when it comes to affirmative action. And people don't, I don't know if people do this on purpose, but it's almost as if People who support affirmative action or like say, yeah, this is a good step, always try to make being black and being poor synonymous. And what do I mean by that? When you look at, okay, let's make steps to make to make the world a better place, to make it more fair or equitable, you do realize poor white people exist. And the reason I always bring up poor white people is because affirmative action is race specific. In the way that we all understand it, so when you're saying okay, let's pri when you look at privatized education or you look at um, economic struggles and you use affirmative action as a way to go against economic struggles, you do realize not only black people are poor, right? There are poor white people, or there are white people, or people who just aren't black who need help. But when you think of affirmative action as a way to solve economic issues, it literally, and I mean this by definition. It literally negates any other race of people who struggle that are not black or that are not of color. And to me, I'm like, it's the weirdest thing ever because 70% of America is white. And this is not me making this up. 70% of America is white. And majority of Americans um, do not make more than $70,000 a year. So if you got two, three kids and your household income is $70,000 a year, you can be considered um, a struggling class or you can be considered a class that needs help. But if you're white all of a sudden, you don't need help anymore. It doesn't make sense to me, but let's continue. All right. Okay. All right. That's cool. All right. There's the starts. Somebody else. Who else wants to kick it out? Anyway, what do you think? Dude, the idea is... The idea is how do you break the cycle? They both take the SAT. For him to compete with him, for him to compete with him, okay, at the more elite schools, he has to score 100 points higher on average on his SAT exam than he does. Because in the United States, we've come to this place where at the elite institutions, there are too many Asians. And like people that look like him, it's like it's cool. 
And we want a fair and equitable system, but what's going on is there are too many Asians who are coming in, doing really well on these exams, and taking all these spots from everybody else. And so listen. And that's, thank you, Dr. Richards, man. Thank you. This is the problem with affirmative action, bro. And this is, this is the only problem I have. It's not even about giving some persons a more or equitable chance. But the problem is that it's not equity. It is literal racism. If, you, if one race is being punished because they just perform better in school, that is racism. It's not fair to say that Asian, um, um, Asian citizens have to perform 100 points higher to get better or to get into the same schools. That's not fair. Then when you look at the black community, if you have a lower standard of academics, that's not fair. It is racism, bro. And we pretend like this doesn't happen. But it happens all the time. And we try to ignore it or gaslight people who say that that's wrong. Well, no, it's the truth. It's 100% true and it's 100% wrong. And we need to do better to fix this. We've not, we don't even have enough space for white people. So in order for you to compete with him at the more equitable schools, you got to score 100 points higher on your SATs. This is how it is. This is affirmative action for white people. Like, you, don't, you didn't know that, right? So, okay, you didn't know that all these Asian people who you see as in your classes, this isn't so true, and this isn't really true here at Penn State because we're not one of the more elite schools. Carter, in spite of fact, I know that the cheering team thinks that we are, but we're really not, all right? And so, we're not... Even at non-elite schools, schools still do have scholarships for race-specific for race specific or even gender-specific. How is that fair? How am I getting punished or rewarded simply based off of the fact that I'm black or white or Asian? That is wrong, bro. That's wrong. It's not right, man. And the fact that it's just accepted nationwide as this, as this good thing or as this normal thing, uh, I, I don't agree with it. I don't agree with it at all. I don't agree. Not one of the more elite schools, but if we were, there's no white person who thinks like, oh yeah, I got affirmative action in here because, you know, all these Asians had to score so much higher than I did. And a big argument I hear is that, oh, but if we say that we're just going to be 100% married, blah, 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 there'll be too many Asian people or too many race, uh, uh, white people, whatever. My, my answer to that is who cares? If we go 100% merit-based and let's say... Harvard becomes 70% Asian or 60% Asian or whatever percent Asian or white. Why do people care? If this race of people or if this group of people perform better, they deserve to be there. I, that's how I think about it. Why does it have to be equal um, races at every school? Why did you have to have a specific quota of a race? If one race performs better, they deserve to be there. The NBA is like 90% black. Nobody says anything because on like I, if they if they play the sport better or if they do this better, who cares, right? It's like that with basketball, but for, for some reason, when it comes to academics and another race performs better, you just will not give them the decency of saying, okay, y'all deserve to be here, so we'll let you be here. I don't know why that happens, but it's none of my business. I'm going I'm to look more into it. One day we could probably solve it, but right now, I don't know. The problem is, when you're up here, you don't see it as affirmative action. Because when I'm up here, like, I'm working really hard, y'all. Like, I pull in 50 and 60 hour weeks. I'm, I'm, I'm going to attribute everything I do to my hard work. I really do work 50 and 60 hour weeks. And so, like... And I always have. And so I'm just like thinking, yeah, well, this is, I'm here because of my hard work. I never imagined any of the benefits that I got, like from my skin color or the fact that I'm a man. Dude, I, I only teach this. I can only teach this. Dude, if I was a woman, I could never teach this class the way I do. Because y'all would come at, especially the men, but also the women. You would come at me so hard. Stuff that I say, how can you say that? What right do you have to say that? The stories I hear from my female colleagues, not here, just here at Penn State, from all across the country, the story, the ways they get challenged by students, the stories I hear, it's, it's astounding to me and how rarely I really get challenged. 
with things that I do. And so part of the reason I can do this class and I can be successful, as successful as I am, however successful that is, is because I'm a man. Um, that's kind of a false equivalency. And I'm not trying to say that you don't know what you're talking about, but I'm here to challenge you right now. What you're saying is just, it's a false equivalency. Because yes, as a man or maybe as a white man, you do have possibly certain privileges that you would not have if you were a woman. But the same is said for women where they have privileges that they would not have as a man. So both are kind of true. So to just automatically assume that if you are a woman, you would fail as a professor of this specific class. No, that's not necessarily true. It's a possibility, but it's not true because if you are a woman, you would have certain privileges that you do not have now. The same way that when you're a man, you have certain privileges that you do not have now. And the reason why I'm comfortably able to say this is because as a man, you have certain disadvantages that women don't have. And as a woman, you have certain disadvantages that a man doesn't have. So it's 100% fair to you know conclude that the opposite is true. That a woman has advantages that men will never have. And that a man, a man has advantages that women will never have. So that's just how life is. And definitely because I'm white. Definitely. Dude, if I gave today's lecture as a black man, if Maurice and I just switched bodies and I gave today's class just as a black man, y'all like, man, come on. You, you just would be like, nah, I'm not, I'm not buying this. This is black people trying to make excuses for the fact that they're on the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> Work harder. Uh, okay, um, let me know what y'all think about that in the comments. Uh, yeah. I don't know if I just